There is an ongoing effort to create a Palestinian Arab state on strategic territory of Israel, the Jewish state. The future Arab-Palestinian state will be governed by PLO Fatah, now better known as the Palestinian Authority. One must take into account certain historical facts, which are mostly unknown to the public, in order to evaluate the wisdom of this policy. PLO Fatah was created by a top director of the Final Solution, the Nazi program to exterminate the European Jewish people. That is the story we will share in what follows. HIR and FACES present a series based on the book The Collapse of the West, The Next Holocaust and Its Consequences. All over Europe, a people walks with its head bowed under constant abuse, sporting on its clothes a Star of David. Hardly anybody protests. Europe is docile and obedient to its new masters. The Nazis advance in the cold towards Moscow. Lethal serpents coil and strike at the civilian population. Einsatzgruppen. More than two million human beings are destroyed, a majority of them Jewish. But before the fall of 1941, the Nazis have not yet decided to exterminate the Jewish people. They intend to expel the majority. What decided the Nazis in favor of extermination in the fall of 1941? Two things. First, nobody wanted to receive the expelled Jews. Second, in November of 1941, Haj al Husseini arrived in Berlin. Who was Haj Amin al Husseini? He is the recognized father of the Palestinian Arab movement. Husseini was received with all honors by the Nazis. Hitler and Husseini sat to plan the extermination of the Jews in the Middle East, as registered in the Nazi minutes of the meeting. The Führer then made the following statement to the Mufti, enjoining him to lock it in the uttermost depths of his heart. Germany's objective would then be solely the destruction of the Jewish element residing in the Arab sphere under the protection of British power. Husseini had been the Grand Mufti of Jerusalem, the greatest political, bureaucratic, and religious authority among the Muslims of British Mandate Palestine. In 1936, Husseini organized his fourth terrorist attack against the Jews of the British Mandate. He coordinated his actions with Hassan al-Banna, founder of the Muslim Brotherhood. Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini sent weapons. After the Arab revolt, Husseini traveled to Iran, then to Iraq, where, with the help of the Iraqi government, which sympathized with the Nazis, he organized a mass killing of the Iraqi Jews called the Farhud. Then he traveled to Rome, and arrives finally in Berlin in October of 1941. Shortly thereafter, in the Berlin suburb of Wannsee, a conference was held. Important officials of the Third Reich decided there that they would kill all of the European Jews. The question is, did Husseini have something to do with this decision? After the war, at the Nuremberg War Crimes Tribunal, evidence was presented to consider Husseini's part in this decision. The witness was Dieter Wislaseni, right-hand man to Adolf Eichmann, the acknowledged director and administrator of the extermination of the European Jews. 
Vistaseni testified as follows about the Mufti Husseini. According to my opinion, the Grand Mufti played a role in the decision of the German government to exterminate the European Jews, the importance of which must not be disregarded. He had repeatedly suggested to the various authorities with whom he has been in contact, above all before Hitler, Ribbentrop, and Himmler, the extermination of European Jewry. He considered this as a comfortable solution of the Palestine problem. He was one of Eichmann's best friends and has constantly incited him to accelerate the extermination measures. Vislaseni also stated the following. The Mufti is one of the originators of the systematic destruction of European Jewry by the Germans, and he has become a permanent colleague, partner, and advisor to Eichmann in the implementation of this program. In Nazi-occupied Yugoslavia, in Bosnia and Kosovo, Husseini oversaw the recruitment and training of Muslim troops for Heinrich Himmler's SS, troops that committed genocide against Serbs, Jews, and Roma. After the war, Husseini escaped to Cairo. With the blood of millions of Jews still fresh on European soil, the UN voted in 1947 to establish in the Middle East a state for the Jewish people. It also approved the creation of a Palestinian Arab state. No sooner had the vote been announced, Azam Pasha, Secretary General of the Arab League, announced with great excitement that the Arabs would make a new holocaust. This will be a war of extermination and a momentous massacre which will be spoken of like the Mongolian massacres in the Crusades. Haj Amin al-Husseini led the Palestinian Arab effort in this war of genocidal intent. The Jews, most of them civilians without military training, and without heavy weapons, defeated the professional armies of the United Arab States. They established their new state. Egypt and Jordan illegally occupied those territories which had been designated for a Palestinian Arab state and precluded the formation of that state. Gamal Abdel Nasser, leader of the Pan-Arab nationalist movement, seized power in Egypt in 1952. Nasser was obsessed by a single idea, Israel. Otto Skorzeny and dozens of aging Nazis did indeed trek to Cairo in the first years of Nasser's regime to prepare the Arabs for battle with the new Jewish state. Taking advantage of the presence of his Nazi colleagues in Cairo, the Mufti Hajamin al-Husseini made young Yasser Arafat, then living in Cairo, his protege. The Mufti secretly imported a former Nazi commando officer into Egypt to teach Mr. Arafat and other teenage recruits the fine points of guerrilla warfare. Mr. Arafat learned his lessons well. The Mufti was so proud of him, he even pretended the two of them were blood relations. Arafat and a few other adolescents formed the initial nucleus of Al-Fatah. Among them was Mahmoud Abbas alias Abu Mazen, the current leader of the organization. In 1967, Nasser announced a new Arab war to exterminate the Israelis. We shall not enter Palestine, he said, with its soil covered in sand. We shall enter it with its soil saturated in blood. The battle will be a general one, and our basic objective will be to destroy Israel. Arabs lost again. Israel acquired, among others, the territories of Gaza, Judea, and Samaria that Egypt and Jordan had illegally occupied. These are the famous disputed territories. Starting in 1970, Husseini's movement Al-Fatah absorbed the PLO and adopted its name.
For years, PLO Fatah launched terrorist attacks against Israeli civilians in the early 1980s from its bases in southern Lebanon. Israel invaded Lebanon and won. The remainder of the organization then took refuge in Tunis. PLO Fatah had been defeated. But in 1993-94, thanks to pressure from the United States and other Western powers, PLO Fatah was revived. PLO Fatah promised to renounce terrorism. This earned it entry into Israel as the new government of the Arab Muslim population in the disputed territories. PLO Fatah now called itself the Palestinian Authority. Overnight, terrorism against Israelis quintupled. Even so, the diplomatic process to empower PLO Fatah was sped forward. On November 29, 2012, the UN granted Mahmoud Abbas's Palestinian Authority the status of observer state. This repeats and elevates what the UN did in 1977 when it granted PLO Fatah observer status. Who was it that presided, as UN Secretary General, the elevation of PLO Fatah at the UN in 1977? Kurt Waldheim. When Waldheim afterwards became President of Austria, it was documented that he had participated as Nazi officer in the Yugoslav massacres of World War II. The same massacres that Haj Amin al-Husseini, Arafat's mentor, also organized. The Muslim Brotherhood of Nazi ally and Husseini ally Hassan al-Banna is gaining power all around Israel, in Tunis, in Libya, in Egypt, in Syria. Hamas is a Palestinian Arab terrorist organization created by the Muslim Brotherhood. Ever since Israel disengaged from Gaza, the Hamas terrorists have been raining rockets against the Israeli civilian population. Mohamed Morsi, the new president of Egypt, is the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. He is seeking to join PLO Fatah and Hamas in a common front. Supporting the effort to produce unity, Hamas invited Mahmoud Abbas, leader of PLO Fatah, or the Palestinian Authority, to preside an event in Gaza commemorating Fatah's first attack against Israel. Mahmoud Abbas there celebrated the memory of his mentor, Hajamin al-Husseini, a leader of the Nazi Final Solution. The Palestinian Arab movement is not without responsibility for the Holocaust, the Nazi extermination of the European Jewish people. We have seen here that the founding father of the Palestinian Arab movement, Haj Amin al-Husseini, was a co-director of the Holocaust. We have also seen that, after the war, Husseini created, with Nazi training, the group PLO Fatah, now better known as the Palestinian Accord. To see the detailed documentation that supports the statements in this video, visit The Collapse of the West, The Next Holocaust and Its Consequences. Part 1. Introduction It is often said that the Palestinian Arabs had their lands stolen from them. Is it true? That will be the subject of our next video.